Here is my list of top 10 physicists that changed our lives. Mind you, this is not a list of the 10 greatest physicists or a list of physicists with the greatest influence on the field of physics or science, but this is a list of the 10 physicists that had the greatest effect on the everyday lives of people around the world. And if you enjoy this video, please help me out by sharing it with a few friends and generally making it your life's mission to promote this channel. That's all I ask, really. So without further ado, let's get on to the list. At number 10, we have Nikola Tesla. Tesla mostly worked in the field of electricity and magnetism, and he invented the alternating current motor, or the AC motor. Alternating current as opposed to direct current, or AC versus DC. AC motors and alternating current in general are something almost everyone uses all the time. For example, alternating current is what comes out of your wall. Tesla also came up with the idea of using waterfall to power AC motors, or hydroelectric dams, which are all over the world today, and are a large part of where we get our energy from. At number 9 we have Lisa Meitner. Lisa Meitner is the one who split the atom. Now to be fair, she didn't do this all by herself, and really no one on this list is coming out of a vacuum, they're all building off of and or working alongside of other people, but they tend to be credited with doing the most important part of the work. Lisa Meitner split the atom with the help of a lot of other people, but she generally gets the credit for it. Splitting the atom led to the first nuclear fission bomb. This is somewhat of a dark chapter in the history of physics, but the fact is the invention of the atomic bomb and its possession by numerous countries around the world has had an enormous effect on the geopolitical situation in the 20th and 21st centuries. Some would say for worse, because we now have nuclear threat, others say the existence of nuclear bombs minimizes the likelihood of warfare, so this is actually a good thing. I'm not going to make any claims either way, I'm not a political scientist, generally I would consider that term to be an oxymoron. Splitting the atom also allowed for nuclear fission power plants, a relatively clean source of energy used all around the world today. At number 8 we have Julius Edgar Lilienfeld. This is someone probably most of you have never heard of, but he is the guy who invented the transistor. Now he didn't actually build a transistor, he just came up with the idea and filed the first patent for one. The first transistor that was actually built was built by John Bardeen, William Shockley, and Walter Bratton, for which they got a Nobel Prize. But the idea and the original patent was from Lilienfeld. Transistors are the key to modern computation and are found in every single modern computing device. The processor inside your smartphone has something like 10 billion transistors in it. Without transistors, the processor in your smartphone would have to be the size of a large building, which would be pretty impractical as a handheld device. At number 7 we have Ludwig Boltzmann. If you're enjoying this video so far, please let the YouTube algorithm know about it by liking and subscribing and maybe sharing it with some friends. Boltzmann is largely known for his work in the particle theory of matter. That is the theory that matter is made up of a bunch of little particles interacting with one another. Now this theory wasn't his idea, but thanks to his work, pretty much everyone had to accept it. This is the key to statistical mechanics and chemistry in general. Within this field, he is most famous for quantifying the concept of entropy. And thanks to this work, we can understand things like heat flow and energy transport. Why is it that energy flows from hot things to cold things and never the other way? His work has allowed us to understand how much energy we can get from heat and how to build things like heat engines such as internal combustion engines which are found in your cars and numerous other machines. This understanding of statistical mechanics, entropy, and heat flow also allows us to do the opposite of heat engines and understand refrigeration, how to use energy to cool things down. So thanks to him, we have things like central heating, internal combustion engines, AC, and refrigerators. At number 6 we have Alessandro Volta. Volta, it's very simple, invented the battery. That's where we get the word volts from. They're named after him. How many devices in your life work off of or make use of batteries? Imagine how different your life would be if batteries disappeared tomorrow. At number 5 we have Ibn Sahl. Ibn Sahl discovered what is erroneously called Snell's Law of Refraction, how light bends as it goes from one material to another. His law was later published in Al-Haytham's famous treatise on optics, which was widely read around the Muslim world as well as Europe. 
Thanks to this law, we can build things like lenses. Just think of how many things in the world make use of lenses. Everything involving photography, for example. After all, we live in the age where the most valued art form is cinema. You can't make a movie without lenses. Or something as simple as glasses. How many of you wear glasses or know people who wear glasses? At number four, we have Michael Faraday. Faraday is the first person to realize that there is a connection between electricity and magnetism, and specifically that a changing magnetic field will induce an electric current. This is known as Faraday's law. Now this mathematical form of this law is how you would write it using calculus, but Faraday only knew basic algebra. He didn't write it this way. He expressed it in words. Faraday's law is the basis of Tesla's AC motor. The AC motor is entirely based on Faraday's law. There's a famous story that Faraday presented this finding in front of parliament or some other local politicians, and the response was, yeah, that's nice and all, but what use is it? And he replied, it's so useful that you're going to tax it one day. Now, I don't know if this story is actually true. It's probably just a legend, but it's a nice story. At number three, we have James Maxwell. James Maxwell essentially finished Faraday's work and completed the theory and unification of electricity and magnetism with a set of four equations known as Maxwell's equations. He didn't actually come up with all four equations. He only contributed the last one. And notice that the second one is Faraday's law, but he added the final piece, giving us a complete theory of electricity and magnetism. Every single technological device that involves electricity and or magnetism is based on solving these four equations. Without him, and others of course, we don't have a world powered by electricity. His equations also allowed him to discover that light is in fact just a propagating electromagnetic wave. This is the wave theory of light. Technically, it's not correct once you get into quantum mechanics, but for practical purposes, pretty much this is the theory we use. The wave theory of light tells us that light exists on an electromagnetic spectrum where different colors of light simply have different wavelengths. Invisible light only makes up a very narrow band of wavelengths that the eye happens to be sensitive to. At very small wavelengths, we have things like X-ray light or ultraviolet light. And at larger wavelengths, we have infrared light, which we experience as heat, then microwaves. And at very large wavelengths, we have radio waves. So not only do Maxwell's equations give us the world of electricity, but it also brought upon the age of information. We can now use radio waves, thanks to his four equations, to transmit information essentially instantaneously around the world. Every single device involving some sort of communication at a distance, whether it be your cell phone, a radio, satellites, or just your remote control, are based off of Maxwell's equations and the wave theory of light. Now the last two, I hesitated for a while before deciding who I would put first. Really, I would like to give them a tie, but I forced myself to pick one. So at number two, we have Al Khwarizmi. Al Khwarizmi introduced the Hindu decimal system to the Arabs. And as a result, it spread all around the world and pretty much everyone in the world uses the Hindu decimal system today. If it weren't for him, unless you were living in India or around India, you would probably be using things like Roman numerals or the alphabet as your number system. He also introduced Indian trigonometry to the Arabs, which is the trigonometry we use today. I know you think we get our trigonometry from the Greeks, but we actually use the Indian conventions, and it's because of this guy. Trigonometry was largely invented for the purpose of astronomy, which he also introduced to the Arabs. And today, almost all the stars in the sky have Arabic names as a result of the astronomy practice in the Arab or Muslim empires. Al Khwarizmi also invented algebra. How many fields today make use of algebra? Whether it be in scientific fields or economics or really any field that uses even a little bit of math is going to use algebra. He may also be one of the first people to make use of the scientific method. He never wrote about the scientific method explicitly or at least if he did, we don't have any surviving records of it, but it would seem that he definitely practiced it. The first actual documentation of the scientific method that we have were written by people who came from the same culture as him just a little bit later. 
And that culture was the Central Asian culture centered around what are today essentially the countries ending in Stan. This is the culture that basically introduced science to the Arabs, and then that spread all around the Muslim world due to the enormous size of the Arab empires. If you'd like to know more about this forgotten, scientifically advanced Central Asian culture, you can check out my video on Transoxiana and Science's Forgotten Civilization. Finally, we come to number one. I think you probably all know who this is, and that is Isaac Newton, of course. He basically single-handedly invented modern physics, starting with his three laws of motion and his discovery of the law of gravity. He also almost single-handedly invented calculus. There were others who independently invented calculus, but he invented it on his own, basically in his room, for the purpose of solving his new laws of physics. And he didn't stop there, he also contributed to the field of optics, but essentially every single piece of modern technology in the industrialized and electric world is either indirectly or directly a result of his work. That's my list of top 10 physicists who changed our lives. Let me know what you think. Do you agree with my list? Is there anyone you think I left out? And if so, who would they have replaced on this list? I hope you enjoyed this video. Please be sure to like and subscribe and hit the bell to be notified for release of future physics videos. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.